30 years ago, there was a Time magazine. It was called The Me Generation. Big article on it, it's a big, big deal. In 2013, Time Magazine came out with their 30 year edition of that particularly magazine for that year, 30 years earlier. And they called it this year, the Me, Me, Me Generation. Since we're talking about happiness, happiness comes from giving. Happiness comes from getting outside yourself for a moment and blessing and helping the lives of others in a positive way, to the best of your ability. You're not expected to do everything for someone else, but if you see someone in need, hey, be that person. In the article, they talked about 30 years ago, if you were to imagine 30 years ago today, this is what it would look like. Right now, the average millennial has over 87 pictures of themselves on their Facebook page. <laughs> that would be like us that are X and Y and baby boomer generation laying in a room and instead of having Steve Young posters and Michael Jackson posters, right? You had 80 in your wall, in your room, you had 87 pictures of yourself. How many of you, by a show of hands, would say that sounds a little narcissistic? <laughs> but let me tell you, that is where we are at today. No one gets to the top by themselves. In the 15th century, there was a large family of 15 kids. Dad worked in the coal mine almost day and night to provide for this family. Two of the boys of this, these 15 kids, two of the boys had a dream, a vision, to go to the academy in Nuremberg. They wanted to become artists. They sort of had a thing for artistic work. And so the two brothers got together. They knew that dad could not provide for them the education, that they would have to figure out a way to do it themselves. <coughs> So the two brothers decided they would flip a coin. And the one who won would be able to go to college first, and the one who lost would then go work in the mine and support the brother who was at school. And then when he graduated, they would switch roles, and the other brother would be able to go to school. So after church one day, they flipped a coin. Now the two brothers' names were very similar. Albrecht. Durr and Albur Durr flipped the coin and Albrecht, the older brother, won the coin toss. As agreed upon, Albrecht went to the academy. Albur went down into the mine with his dad to work. Immediately upon arriving to the academy, there was something special about Albrecht. He was really good. I mean, he could outperform and outdraw and outpaint the professors. In fact, he got all kinds of honoraries and awards. But eventually, he graduated. And he came home, and his parents had a huge feast out in the front yard, a long table with food. And at the appropriate time, Albrecht stood up with his glass to give a toast. And he said, Brother Alber, thank you for the years that you've sacrificed for me so I could get my schooling done. Now it is your turn. And about then, the whole family turned their eyes down the other end of the, the table. And there Alber with his elbows on the table, his hands over his face. He was mumbling, no, no, no. He stood up. He said, brother, I can't do it. It's too late for me. You know, working down in the mine, those past four years, I've broken almost every finger. 
I now have arthritis in my hands. I can't do it. He says, I could barely pick up a, a glass to toast you back, let alone a brush or a stencil or something. I, I can't do it. Forward that about 500 and something years, Albrecht's paintings and his works, the brother who did go to school, reside in many of the great museums around the world. He produced masterpiece after masterpiece. What an amazing thing. In respect, in love for his brother, who was not able to finish schooling and live his dream, he asked him to go down to the basement one day and he said, hold your hands together and let me paint your hands. I wager that almost everybody in this room or a family member that you know has on their wall that masterpiece painting of hands. Maybe you have it as an as a, as a end piece on a, you know, a bookshelf or you have it on your piano as a little statue. That was Albrecht Durer who painted the hands of his brother, those broken hands. Back then, he titled it Hands. Over the years, it has been changed to the praying hands. Albert did a wonderful thing that contributed in a wonderful way to society, although he wasn't able to shine himself. He gave selflessly to his brother. And I just ask you today to live in faith that as you leave here this weekend and as you go out into the real world and you notice people, family, friends, co-workers that are in need of strengthening, that you will be that person that will lift them in a positive way, that will give a little bit of enthusiasm and inspiration to them. You know, the root word to enthusiasm means to breathe life into someone. And in so doing, you will be happy. Greatnesswithin.com